Welcome back guys. In today's video, we're going to talk about red team engagements part two. If you remember in previous in the previous video, we talked about red team basics. We laid down the basics and this, is, this was actually part one. We talked about the difference between red team penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. And we also illustrated how red team is more overarching than such a simple pen testing or vulnerability assessment. Also, we talked about the procedure, the roles in the red team, the red team lead, the operator, some terminologies like the red cell, the blue cell, and the white cell. And also, we, talk, we took some simulation, sample simulation of a phishing email targeting a specific organization. In this video, we will carry on part one and start part two. In part two, we will assume that the red team has decided to um, take on a contract with a client so that the red team will conduct um, either a pen testing or they will conduct an attacker emulation so here the red team will start working on their client so what is the very first thing we define when we sign with a, a client about the red team engagement the first thing we do all the time is we set the client objectives goals and role of of engagement it's very important to be clear about what the client wants out of this engagement what are their goals these goals should be very concrete goals for example setting the security posture we'll talk about examples now and it's very important to set mutually between you and the client the roles of engagement what is allowed what isn't allowed and also set the scope the next thing is setting the scope of the engagement the scope of the engagement is a document that is mutually agreed upon between you and the client this document sets actually what are the resources you require to test and what are the resources you are prohibited from interacting with let's talk about, let's talk about some examples so what are the examples uh, objectives as you can see we can set you can agree with the client that one of the very important objectives is to identify system misconfigurations here oh let me remove this one Let's take this one. Uh, yeah. So as you can see first, as an example, we want to test, we want to see the system misconfigurations and network weaknesses. For example, uh, we can, we can uh, say uh, we have Linux systems in place and some of the misconfigurations that could be in place are these mis uh, the uh, misconfigured files or the misconfigured permissions on the files and directories. Um, in the objectives the client may want you to focus only on exterior systems such as public facing systems web servers uh, file servers um, any server or any computer any endpoint that's exposed to the internet and is expected to be interacting with customers or clients also one of the most important objectives of um, the engagement is setting the or testing the effectiveness of the endpoint detection and response systems so as you can as you know uh, any c client would have blue team operating in place right so the blue team would have set uh, endpoint detection security measures one of the objectives that may be required from you or from the engagement is to test these security measures and how effective and, effic uh, and efficient they are um, also we test the SIEM security information management security information event management one of the examples of uh, SIM devices is the Splunk as you know also with this detection measures how efficient these devices or how efficient these security controls are at detecting uh, uh, you know attacks remediation segmentation of DMZ and internal servers so when, when, once you are engaged in the plan you should segment the interaction between DMZ and internal servers also here some rules about white cards are permitted or not and lastly evaluate the impact of that exposure and exfiltration this is an these are example objectives right they are not standard template so after we have set the objectives and the goals next comes the scope of the engagement so we define what is required, what is permitted, and what is allowed. For example, system downtime is not permitted under any circumstances. So the client won't 
want any downtime in their systems or interactions. This means that if you have discovered an exploit while you are doing uh, pen testing of some uh, computers, you are allowed. You, you have to be very careful when you apply this exploit, as some exploits cause um, downtime in systems. Also, some exploits cause the DDoS or DOS uh, impact on the devices. So make sure these are not uh, materialized while you do the engagements. Again, using harmful malware may be prohibited in an engagement. Uh, this means that you're not allowed to use any sort of backdoors, uh, PowerShell, uh, yeah, PowerShell backdoors, any sort of backdoors, malware, to come back to the system is also not allowed. Also, exfiltration of personally identifiable information. So, if you happen to uh, escalate your privileges on some of the systems and you found some information about employees or customers, uh, also you're not allowed to exfiltrate these information. In some engagements, you are allowed to test how firewalls and intrusion prevention systems may um, prohibit you or prevent you from exfil exfiltrating these information. But in some engagements, they are prohibited. And the scope also may contain information about what systems, what networks in your client's company or in your client's network are, are permitted or prohibited from interacting with. Also, some domains may be mentioned and whether you are allowed to interact with. So after we have set the goals, objectives, and roles of engagement, and after we have set the scope with the client, now it's time to talk about what we call the campaign planning. How do you plan the red team campaign? In planning the red team campaign, we create multiple documents to come back to when we conduct the engagement. So the very first thing of campaign planning, we create something called the engagement documentation, right? Engagement documentation contains several documents. The first document in any engagement documentation is called, what I call it is, I'm gonna put here, um, I'm gonna put only, I'm gonna write only the uh, abbreviation, CONOPS. CONOPS is the first document you create in any red team engagement. And it is part of engagement documentation, which is part of campaign planning. The CONOPS or concept of operations is a document that details high-level overview of how the red team engagement will be conducted and how the overview of the proceedings all right so it's kind of executive summary you can you can uh, take it as executive summary of a pen test it's very similar to executive summary so concept of operations as i said earlier should be uh, should be a high level right brief and talks about how the engagement is done in a very brief uh, manner of course, sometimes you may need to talk about technicals, but bear in mind that these technicals should be uh, easy, easy to, uh, how can I say, easy to be comprehended by any high level uh, employee on your client's end. For example, let's talk about the example of CONOPS. This is an example of CONOPS. What does it include? It includes the client name, includes the service provider, it's you in this case, the time frame general, when the engagement will start and when the engagement will finish, what are the objectives and the phases. You can take the objective and the phases from the objective documents you have said earlier, other training objectives, high level tools, techniques plan to be used. Here you can mention some uh, information about the tools that you will use in your um, um, planning. For example, you may mention that you will use Cobalt Strike, right? But you will not delve into more details about the sub tools that you will use. It's very important not to distract the uh, main objective of CONOPS. It's a high level overview of what you're doing. The threat group to emulate. And we talked about this in the previous video. So the threat group could be APT3, um, could be APT4. It's highly dependable and reliant on your client's industry and what are the common group adversaries that targeted these in this industry all right so now we talked about the very first document of the engagement documentation the next document we call it is so here i'm gonna use this color it's called the resource plan or the resource planning document 
So here you have one the first document. Next we have the resource planning document. The resource planning document also details overview of many several stuff. The first thing is the dates. We outline the dates of the engagement. Next, we outline the required resources. We will take an example now of a re resource plan, but it's very important to understand that this plan or this document has two components. The first one is the date, and the next one is the resources required. The resources could be cloud resources, could be hardware resources, could be software, and could be personal resources. So this is the resource plan. Uh, the next one, or the third document we have on the list is the operations plan, OPS plan. The operations plan is part also of the engagement documentation and it's kind of a flexible document. It provides details of the engagement and what are the actions that will be taken. For example, you may talk about the personnel, uh, personal names who will be taking on the engagement. You may be talking about uh, what will happen if something disrupted the engagement. Are, are you going to continue the engagement if uh, there was something that disrupted the engagement, such, such as system outage or power outage? What are the required personnel to do the engagement? What are the specific attacks uh, that you will emulate? What are the specific tools? And how you will communicate with the client and the rest of the team? And the last document is for, we have, we have it here, the mission plan. So the mission plan may actually may actually uh, be, let's say it has let's has some commons between uh, with the op the ops plan. So the difference between the mission plan and the ops plan is the mission plan is actually internal to the team. Only the team will get access to this document. Not because it's sensitive or confidential. It's because that it contains information that's only uh, relatable and relevant to the team if the client has access to this document they won't have a clue of what uh, uh, a clue of what what's it about right it's only for the team mission plan it may contain objectives the operators specific uh, very technical details about the exploits and the attacks will be used what are the targets machine names machine ip addresses the users that will be targeted um, and other ex and other execution plan variations so Th these are the four documents that are part of the engagement documentation. Now let's talk about examples of these documents. So you can go to uh, redteam.guide and this side there are multiple examples and you can buy their book Red Team Development and Operations. This book contains um, all of the details we talked about. Every single detail about the Red Team engagement and operation. At the, at the same time, you can also take a look at their checklist. So here in the checklist, it's also here part of the planning and you can take a look at the checklist and some of the uh, stuff mentioned in the rules of engagement, as you can see here. And what are the different tiers when you plan an engagement against infrastructures, the execution and the culmination. Of course, these are only uh, brief details about the engagement you can buy the book if you want uh, but if you don't want to buy the book now you got a very small I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say small it's kind of brief overview of what is the red team engagement pace for team engagement and what are the multiple components of the red team engagements along with some examples now what is a uh, best scenario what is best example of what we talked about you can take a look at the room called Try Hack Me Red Team Engagements. In the Red Team Engagements, they mentioned some examples about resource plan, operations plan, and mission plan. Let's talk about this. So if you click on view site, you see here example of a resource plan. And you take a look at the execution dates of the engagement. For example, when will the reconnaissance start? When does the initial access start? And the dates of the post exploitation and the persistence also you see requirements uh, impo information about the resources uh, as it uh, relates to personal hardware requirements cloud requirements for example here red cell is requesting a budget for ten thousand dollars for aws cloud cost maybe they will use the amazon to launch the attacks 
of course known the Amazon instances and here you can see no hardware is required for this engagement and here is the summary of the resource document you can also take a look at the example of operations plan this is the operations plan it mentions information about the name of the red cell red cell lead who is the red cell lead and this happens to be the lead of all, also the red team and client rule of concept B enterprises this is the example enterprise of course the objective of the engagement as you can see here plan TTPs and attacks take a look at this one for example due to the discovery of email addresses in the reconnaissance phase spear phishing via MSHTA and type of squatted domains will be employed in the initial access phase here we talk about in the operations we mentioned uh, I'm not gonna say high level overview and low level overview, medium level overview of what are the technicalities of the uh, engagement also the communication plan what will be used to communicate throughout the engagement in this example they use vector.io to communicate internally and with the client and lastly you can take a look at the example of mission plan you see the mission plan is more tailored toward the, the red team itself without any uh, consideration of the client take a look for example here they mention uh, details about the targets the names of the computers domains IP addresses everything is documented in any red team engagement and the beautiful thing about any red team engagement is that it emulates a uh, real attacker that is the difference between red team and the pen testing in the pen testing you have assessment of the security posture of a company but in the red team yes you assess the security posture and also you emulate an ongoing attack so guys that was it for today i hope you liked the video and found it informative and we will definitely see you in the next video